when I wait for AI, I mean, OpenAI is on fire. Their first open source model since GPT-2 and then their new flagship GPT-5. But it is not just OpenAI. Google and Anthropic also had some major updates. So a lot of things we need to discuss. Let's go. It finally happened. It is really here. We finally got ChatGPT 5 after almost two years of hearing it's coming, but I haven't had time to really put it to the full test. So I can't tell you if it's going to be a hit or just be fine, but there are a few things you should know right now. First thing is that now you only have one model to choose from. Remember how sometimes you had to try three or four different models before finding the one that gave you a decent answer? That's gone. No more 404104. You open ChatGPT, it's just GPT-5, same model for coding, writing, whatever you throw at it. And it is apparently better at keeping the bigger picture in mind. Like if you're working on a project and there is a bug touching five different files, it should be able to fix it without breaking the rest, just like Claude. And it is supposedly awesome for writing, which I cannot confirm, but I have to do more tests. But for me, the biggest change is the price, because if you wanted to use the OpenAI models, they were kind of pricey compared to Google, but they were into a super aggressive price policy. Just look at this, 125 cent per million tokens, and for some variations, only 5 cent. These are the cheapest models out there. I might even change to OpenAI. I am working on a full review of the models, so stay tuned for that, but let me know what you were expecting. So OpenAI really did. For the first time since GPT-2, they truly released two open source models you can run yourself. They've made GPT OSS 120B and 20B available, and they are open weight models. That means you can download the models and run them directly on your own hardware. And using them is child's play because they are being supported by Olama. Really, you can set them up in just 15 minutes. If you don't know how, just check out this video. And I was kind of skeptical. I mean, how good could the open source models be, right? Well, they are kind of neat and they score really good on the benchmarks. Take the larger one with 120 billion parameters. It shows reasoning capabilities close to OpenAI's O4 Mini. But you would need a single 80 gigabyte GPU, so not really for home use. However, the smaller one performs much like the O3 Mini and can even fit on devices with just 60 gigabytes of memory. So pretty much any modern computer. So yes, powerful AI on your laptop, local, secure, incredible. But what are your thoughts? Are you also excited about this release? This one kind of blew my mind and no one less that DeepMind just unveiled Jenny 3, a new world model. And what this thing does is to create dynamic, interactive environments you can actually navigate in real time. This isn't some choppy pre-render video. You can now actively explore a whole world just with a single prompt. I mean, DeepMind has been working on this for over a decade, from training agents in games to building complex robotic simulations. But the key here is the true real-time interaction and remarkable environmental consistency. If you're exploring a volcanic landscape or jet skiing through a festival of lights, Jenny 3 will construct that world frame by frame, remembering where you have been and what you have changed. But it gets even wider. You can even use text to trigger world events, like changing the weather or introducing new objects on the fly, which is insane because simulations like this used to take months or even years to develop, and now they are done with a single prompt. Imagine what that means for training the next generation of robots or experiencing stories like never before. But don't lose your mind just now. It is not perfect, of course. You can only interact for a few minutes right now, and it's not yet great at creating things like legible text or perfectly recreating a real world city. But mark this day, because DeepMind is showing us what AI is truly capable of. What would you like to experience? One ticket to Hogwarts, please. But Google is not done yet. They just turned on a new feature for its top tier Gemini model, and it's impressive. They are calling it DeepThink, and it is a model designed to tackle complex problems 
by effectively extending its thinking time. Unfortunately, it's only available to Google AI Ultra subscribers, so I won't be testing it. But if you have one, please let me know how are you planning to use this kind of power. Now, let me explain in simple words how deep think works. It uses a novel approach called parallel thinking. Imagine Gemini exploring dozens of ideas simultaneously, refining and combining them before settling on the best solution. It's like giving the AI more time to deliberate, to explore multiple hypotheses, leading to remarkably creative and thoughtful responses. And you probably know how unreliable AI is. Sometimes it gives you great answers and sometimes it's just rubbish. So this approach solves that uncertainty. And it is crazy because a variation of deep thing achieved gold medal standard on the International Mathematical Olympia. However, the version available today reaches bronze level, but it's much faster and more usable for the day-to-day -day test. So ChatGPT just added a new feature that will make your life and the life of millions so much easier. They have introduced study mode. And this is the mode you have been waiting for ages. Now you pretty much have a personal tutor that adapts to your specific learning pace. And it's available today for most users. So what are you waiting to finally start learning coding? And the idea behind is pretty straightforward. It uses interactive prompts, just like a dialogue, offering hints and self-reflection questions, and breaks down complex topics into digestible sections. But don't get me wrong, this mode was built on scientific principles, developed with teachers and experts to foster curiosity and metacognition. And here I am sitting and thinking, where was this thing when I was a student? Like, do you know how much time I spent understanding probability theory? But you never stop learning, so I am glad we have this thing now. What was the topic you struggled with and wish you had this kind of help? Base change, because it's time for flash news, your essential rapid fire updates and crucial headlines that you should at least have heard about. Anthropic has released Cloud Opus 4.1. This update brings improvements to agentic tasks, coding, and reasoning. It's available now for paid cloud users and on major cloud platforms at the same price, which is freaking expensive. Anthropic is also adding weekly usage limits for cloud pro and max subscribers, effective late August. This comes due to high demand and some costly users, but will allegedly affect less than 5% of subscribers. XAI drops Grok Imagine, giving premium Grok users the ability to create AI images and short videos. But as usual, be cautious, Grok Imaging reportedly lacks guardrails rising deepfake concerns. China cyber regulator claims NVIDIA H20 AI chips have security vectors, including location tracking and remote shutdown. In response, Beijing is pushing its major tech companies to buy domestic AI chips. Public ChatGPT conversation links briefly appear in Google search. OpenAI confirms this opt-in experiment has ended due to accidental data sharing concerns. So no worries, I guess. Quen Image, a new image mode, renders complex text and performs precise image editing. It supports multi-line layouts in various languages, including English and Chinese. Thanks for watching, and as always, you will find all the links to the AI news below, and make sure to follow to stay up to date. Bye. <laughs>